Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we're looking at some advanced concepts in acid-base titrations in AP Chemistry Unit 8, Section 5. Here we, in this picture we have a, a titration curve for a polyprotic acid, and on the x-axis you see that we have the volume or the milliliters of the sodium hydroxide that has been added, and of course on the y-axis we have the pH. Now you'll notice that this titration curve looks significantly different than the two curves that we looked at in our two previous videos. So why are there two S curves here? Why are there two equivalence points? In these last two that we looked at, in the previous videos, each titration curve only had one. Well, if there are two equivalence points, that must mean that there are two acidic hydrogens that are being uh, popped off or being removed uh, in sequence. And so that implies that we have a diprotic acid. There are two acidic hydrogens. Each one has its own equivalence point. Let's use this information in the curve to estimate the pKa1 of this acid. So in order to do that, we're going to need to look at the halfway point between the starting point and that first equivalence point. Like you might remember in the last video, we said that at the halfway point between where you start and your equivalence point, at the halfway point, that's equal to the pKa. So here's your first equivalence point. So halfway is right around here. And so that's why I have it listed as about 2.2. You may have estimated that a little higher, a little lower, but it's about 2.2 halfway to the first equivalence point. That's actually pretty neat that we can estimate the pKa, and as it turns out, the Ka as well, from just looking at that titration curve. Now let's estimate the pKa2 of this acid. Now once again, that's going to be the halfway point, but this time it's the halfway point between the first equivalence point and the second equivalence point. So that's going to be right around here somewhere. And so if we move over to the left, it looks like it's somewhere around maybe 6.4, somewhere around that area. So it's halfway between the two equivalence points. So that's how you can use a titration curve like this to determine a Ka. In fact, multiple Ka's uh, in the case of this polyprotic acid. Now, let's imagine that this acid is H3PO4, phosphoric acid. And this is probably a pretty good estimate because, as it turns out, uh, in phosphoric acid, you would probably see two hydrogens uh, be removed over the course of the reaction. Well, what is the most common ion form present after 8 milliliters of base have been added? Well, let's just take a look at, at how these uh, work here, how these ions are removed. And the way this works is in between the zero and the first halfway point. So that would be right around here. From zero to that point right there, the most common form is going to be the H3PO4. Now at that first halfway point, you're going to have exactly as much H3PO4 as you have H2PO4 negative. But once you get past that first halfway point, in fact, from that halfway point right there all the way to the next halfway point right around here, from this point to that point, the most common form is going to be H2PO4 negative because that first acidic hydrogen has been taken away. So the answer here is H2PO4 negative. That's what's going to predominate after 5 milliliters up until the 15 milliliter point. Now, what's going to predominate after that point? Let's say we're asking about the 18 milliliter point. Well, from this point right here, that second halfway point, up until the equivalence point right around here, what's going to predominate is going to be the next form that's been taken off, HPO4 2 negative. And that's what's going to predominate 
from the 15 mils up till 20 mils. Now, why just 20? What happens after that? Well, after that, your acid is basically used up. And what predominates after the last equivalence point in pretty much any titration, if you're adding sodium hydroxide, well, it's just hydroxide ions. And that's why this pH level shoots up so quickly and stays so high so consistently after that last equivalence point because hydroxide is your primary component after the last uh, equivalence point in that titration. So that's just a little map of how this titration curve works and what predominates at what point in the titration. Let's take a look at a different type of titration. This is kind of a special type. This is uh, something that we use often in analytical chemistry and often we use a solid or a, a weak acid in its solid form and titrate that with a strong base. Now solid weak acids are what we often call primary standards. Uh, in fact, the, probably the most common one that I can think of is a compound called potassium hydrogen phthalate. Uh, we sometimes just call that KHP. And it's used to determine the concentration of a base solution that we're going to use in the lab. Like for example, if I go into the lab and make up sodium hydroxide, I don't really know exactly what its concentration is until I carry out a standardization and I standardize or determine what the concentration of that sodium hydroxide is. And that's what the primary standard is for. So let's take a look at the data for that experiment that we would use for this. In the laboratory, a chemist weighs out 0.8296 grams of KHP primary standard and dissolves it in water in a flask. It requires 32.56 milliliters of sodium hydroxide solution to reach the endpoint. What is the molarity of that sodium hydroxide solution? Very typical experiment that you would do in the analytical chemistry lab. Well, the first thing we have to do is take this KHP amount and convert it to moles. So 0.8293 grams of KHP, well, we convert it to moles, one mole on top, and 204.22 grams in a mole on bottom. And don't forget that the formula is KHC8H4O4. So that's, that's quite a bit to add up, um, but we just add that up, and that there's our molar mass. And when you divide this out, you find that it's 0 0.004062 moles of the acid. Now that's the moles of the acid. How many moles of the, the base, the sodium hydroxide, do we use? Well, we have to remember that we're assuming that the end point, which it mentions right here, is very close to the equivalence point. And so if that's the case, then the number of moles of acid should be equal to the moles of the base as well. So that means that in our sample of sodium hydroxide, we also had 0 0.00 4062 moles. And we divide that by the volume in liters, which is 0 0.03256 liters. You know, convert the milliliters to liters. And when you divide it out, you get that the molarity of your sodium hydroxide solution is 0.1248 moles per liter. It's a fairly simple process, but it's a very important process in the analytical chemistry lab. Hope you learned something about acid-based titrations in this video and the last few videos as well. In our next video, we're going to move on to uh, section six, which is going to be about how we know the strength or the relative strength and weakness of acids. I'm Jeremy Krug. If you learned something from this one, please smash that like button. I hope to see you in the next video.